peace, welcome. I hope you enjoy this episode of The Stretcher. I'm your host, Jesse Swoyer, nationally recognized inclusive fitness trainer, silver sneaker flex instructor. And you can find out more about me by visiting my website at www.jessieswoyer.com. Now, as you can see, we're in a different location today. So I have the appropriate shirt on, Rogue, because we've gone rogue. And we are bringing you this stretcher from a driveway as I am parked here, prepared to go into my next session. But I've had some time to do this little quick stretcher with you. And this is going to be a hand arthritis exercise part one. Now, remember, when I say part one, that means there's a part two coming. And most often, there's going to be a part three as well. So again, it's going to be hand exercises part one. And we're going to be doing some intrinsic exercises with that wrist. We're also going to be doing some um, tendon glides and we're also going to be doing some finger flexions or you could say extensions as well. It's entirely what, how you want to look at it um, and we're going to bring it to you real quick, real soon, only on this edition, on this rogue edition of the stretcher, the arthritis edition. So again, Functify Maniacs worldwide across the globe, Silver Sneaker members, new members, YouTube subscribers, Facebook live streamers. We have a nice blue sky bringing to you and hopefully uh, you enjoy this guy's presentation of all these arthritis exercises. Now, before we do get started, there are a few things that I need to go over with each and every one of you out there that's about to take this class is that if you have any lightheadedness, pain, dizziness, discomfort, or fatigue, again, please hit that pause button. You can come back a little bit later. You can take this wherever. You can take this in your office. You can take this at home. You can take this when you're just driving, although I would tell you not to do that. You might get pulled over or you might cause an accident, which we don't want that to occur either, but it is going to assist with your grip strength. It is going to assist with any type of arthritis. If it's arthro osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis is all going to assist with those hands and that grip strength as well and your dexterity. So we want to definitely improve that dexterity as we go through this journey of life as well so we can functionally age effectively and efficiently in place because we all know that aging is a cumulative issue. It's also an intrinsic issue. No matter what you do, you could do this every single day with me. You're still going to age and you're still going to have some discomfort. We want to try to take that, that discomfort and that tension away from that wrist so that you can live a high quality life. All right, so that's the goal. And we're going to get to those. Now, I have to go over the stretcher five, and that's your virtual liability. So you should always consult with your physician before engaging in any physical activity program by participating in this online exercise with me. You assume all dangerous hazard risks of such participation. Exercises demonstrated by the instructor in this online class can be demanding. If you're unable to safely perform these exercises, again, please modify them or choose a different set of exercises. Number two, I can't see you or I can't hear you. So again, pay attention to your form and those mechanics. Mirror me. If you are in a car just like I am, you want to take that seat belt off. I've already taken it off. You want to sit up nice and tall if you're at home in that seat. Again, you can do these from a standing position, although I do recommend them from the seated position because you can get a little better leverage. You can rest the elbow on a table. Um, you can rest it on the armrest that I am in my car as well, or you can just rest it on the rib cage if you are in a standing position. But if you are in that standing position or that seated position, you want to tuck the belly, tuck the tailbone. You want the chest out, shoulders are up back and down, and you want those ears over the shoulders because you want to elongate that spine. You want to elongate the neck. You want to elongate the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle that runs that holds your neck in place so that you can do these appropriately and effectively as we go through this stretcher arthritis edition part one now the other thing you want to do is you want to remove the tensions remove the toxins create a healthy environment have a nice blue sky um you can go outside and do this as well right it's what it's meant for right it's a travel it's to go i'm on the go you're on the go and we want these fingers to be on the go as well. And then we get to three. You wanna breathe, inhale, exhale. I know I did all that without a little bit of breath, but I did get some breath. And then four, rate of perceived exertion. This is a stretcher, so it's a one through three, um, not a 10. Oh, you couldn't see all 10, right? 
One, being you're relaxed, you're confident, right? There's no pressure to do these exercises. If you got use of one side of the body or the other side, or you can do bilateral, both sides, you wanna do bilateral. If you can only do unilateral, you do that unilateral. Um, the other thing is based upon there is no pressure is you wanna be relaxed, you wanna be confident doing all this. Number two, uh, you wanna be able to shift your weight if you had to shift your weight, especially if you're in the standing position, but you're in that seated position, so you're not gonna be really shifting, but you wanna be able to work through the motion you want to be able to extend, elongate, um, work on hypertrophy if that's what we're working on. Although we're not, we're working on the tendon glides, the elongation. We're working on finger extension, and then we're looking on in looking for intrinsic wrist type flexion as well. And then the other thing that you want to be focusing on as if you get to that three on the rate of perceived exertion is you're out of breath. We don't want you to be out of breath. We don't want you to be fatigued. We don't want you to be in type of discomfort or any type of tension. We want you to feel a little bit of pressure, a little bit of attention, but we want you to be able to manage that tension. So if you can't manage it, then cut it back. Don't do the tendon glides as far. Don't do the finger lifts as much and then just continue to work with me through these exercises. Then do them on a daily basis as well. So you just can't do them one day and then be sedentary for six and then think you're gonna get a difference because when you think of arthritis, you gotta get blood and you gotta get oxygen flowing to that cartilage that is no longer there that's in between those joints. So you wanna get the blood and oxygen flowing. The only way to do that is by movement. Um, so that's where I need to stop talking and get moving and get some action. And then we get to that number five and that's that hydrate, hydrate, hydrate which I always have my hydration with me. Drink it up. As you can see, whew, I got a long way to go, my friends out there. So um, wish me luck on getting that all accomplished today. So here we go. Let's get to it. Edge of the chair, chest out, shoulders are up, back and down. We're gonna go to tending lines first. I'm gonna use my left hand and I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna be doing. Again, so I'm in a confined area. Um, in my vehicle, so my tendon glide is, this is my hand, my palm. It's not gonna be in the pronated form, so I don't want you to see this side, but you could use this side to show you, so I'll demonstrate from all sides, and then this would be more on the angle that I'd want you to demonstrate these tendon glides with me. So again, this is my left side, and I'm just going to tendon glide, you see what I just did? I kinda just dropped them down, and then I'm going to drop them one more time, and then I'm gonna drop them again. All right, so then I'll turn them so you can see from this position, making that fist and then dropping them one more time. So again, it's a little harder when you get down to that final position of that tendon glide, but it's up like your Spock or something like, hey, you know, you can get them like that too. Um, and then you just drop down, make the fist and the tendon glide. And then I'm gonna just really try to stretch them out. So you see how I kind of stretch them out at the very final end. The finale is you're up, you tend and glide down, and then you tend and glide down again. So as you do this, as you notice, that became much easier for me to do because, oh, and then you're gonna squeeze, you get a nice little squeeze through here, is because they're warming up. Those tendons are warming up as I do that, and I see I got a dysfunctional pinky that doesn't wanna get in line. So again, you can turn your hand this way as well and do them, drop them, nice little fist, and then tendon glide down again. So it's a tendon glide, another tendon glide into a fist, and then drop it down, and then shake them off. Now that's the left side. We wanna do the opposite side. So we wanna do the right side. This is a unilateral exercise. You can do them bilateral, which I'll show you a quick demonstration of doing them both at the same time, which is again, a little more complicated because then you gotta coordinate both hemispheres. So right now it's the right side, and I'm just going to keep my hand straight on up and down like this and I'm gonna tend and glide down, tend and glide again with a fist, and then straighten them out. And again, I got a dysfunctional pinky on this side as well. And I'll turn them this way so you can see. There we go. Now you see my head was forward, I gotta bring it back. Drop down, fist, and then tend and glide down. Which, again, I'm having a more difficult time on this side, which would really be my opposite side that I told you it was, it's the right side. So it's really my left side as we walk through these. And I really struggle with that, that side of motion because it's not my dominant hand. So as you do this, you might notice that, hey, one side or the other is a little harder as you go straight up, drop them down one more time. And again, and you get a nice good squeeze 
at the bottom. So it's a nice good squeeze here. Tendon glide into the fist, into a bigger tendon glide. Tendon glide, tendon glide, and then that final position. There you go. And then we'll do it one more time. Tendon, tendon, and then tendon glide. And that thumb, as you can see, is closed the entire time. Now, some of you might have that thumb open. That's entirely up to you how you manage that. And now I want to do a quick bilateral so that you have to work both those hemispheres to do this motion. So I'm going to put my head in between my hands, but I'm going to relax my shoulders and I'm going to tend and glide down and then both at the same time. And as you can see, this side's a little harder than that side. So um, I'm working on them, tendon, squeeze, and then open. And the more you do it, the easier it should get. You have to concentrate, which is okay. Now I'll do them this way. Whew. I'm really feeling it. And the other place I'm feeling it as well as I do this last time through is like really having a hard time straightening out some of those fingers on the right side and left side is I'm starting to feel that in the wrist because I'm holding those hands in this position, right? Like like a motorcycle position. Again, that's why it's really uh, beneficial sometimes really just to be sitting at a table where you can rest those elbows on some sturdy um, material or form so that you take some pressure off the shoulders as well because we want to be able to take that pressure off the shoulders. So I hope you enjoyed that tendon glide. The next exercise we're going to go to would be an intrinsic flexion, okay? So you say, what's an intrinsic flexion? Well, we do a lot of intrinsic exercises, but the intrinsic flexion would be having your hand, and I'm going to rest my elbow on my console here, and the intrinsic would be just having that hand straight on out and then just flapping in. So if I had my opposite hand, my right hand right here, and I flip in, it is almost, you're intrinsically coming in towards you. Um, so it could be like an internal rotation, but it is just the wrist flapping in like this. Now, what's this remind me of doing? It reminds me of one of those old pinball machines where you're taking the flapper and you're just flapping back and forth. So you can hold it and make it static as you flip it in, or you can make it more active. Now, I tend to enjoy more of the active part because I'm really just trying to get that blood and oxygen flowing back and forth as I do this motion. And I can start feeling the wrist. And again, it's intrinsic flexion. And when we go to the other side, so I have my right hand, I have nothing really to brace my right hand with, so I'm going to sink it into my rib cage and I'm just gonna flex it in. Intrinsic flexion. And I use my opposite hand just so that you can see that I'm not coming back far at all. And again, based upon this video, it can be a little difficult to demonstrate this, but again, you're just trying to pinball, think of those flappers, and you're really doing, and that would be extension if you went the opposite direction, but I'm flexing in with it, and I definitely do better with this left side, which is ultimately my right side, which is my dominant hand, because this is vice versa. Um, so we're gonna do that right side again, and I'm just trying to flip it in. Intrinsic flexion with the hand. And again, I'm working on arthritis, and you can see me grimace at times because there is some discomfort there when I do this. So not only um, do I feel some of that discomfort, especially in that forearm region, but I can feel the wrist doing some motion as well intrinsically. So there are exercises that you want to do and you want to do on a regular basis. So it's not just like once and done exercise. It's an exercise you can do at home, um, sitting at the table while you're doing a commercial break. Um, when, when you're in the bathtub, if you take a bathtub, while you're in the shower, I mean, there are all these exercises that you can do on a regular basis and they'll help you just in daily activities or activities of daily living, no matter if it's tying your shoe or uh, hanging clothing or folding clothing or holding a fork or holding a straw or holding a cup or driving or sewing, which I don't think many people sew anymore, or even texting. So even helps with texting or even hitting the turn signal button 
something I don't ever do, I hit the turn signal button. It really just helps with that motion. So again, that's intrinsic flexion, and you're just trying to really come in towards your body. The next one we're gonna do, and the last one, and then we'll come back to that part two, this arthritis series for the hand, is just, you're going to be doing just finger extension, okay? So finger extension. So I, I just have my hands out, they can be out this way, and you're just gonna take one finger at a time, right? And you're just gonna flip them up. So a nice solid area, again, um, if I use the book right here, right? You can actually really see the finger pop up. And you can see I got that, I got that dysfunctional pinky again, it just wants to pop up with it, and that's that middle finger. If I went forward with it like this, again, you can, you can just really see, again, I'm, I'm laying my hand flat on a, a solid surface, and I'm lifting up that pointer finger, and then that middle finger, and then the index, and when I lift up the index, look, the pinky, it just wants to come along with the ride, right? So pinky, though, it does okay by itself, but once I lift up that ring finger, that pinky, it has a mind of its, its, its own. So again, it's finger extension, thumb. It's not part of the fingers. So that's why, if you notice, I wasn't doing anything with that thumb. So now I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm going to use this um, blue matted area just to show you again because I think it's giving you a nice visual um, of how those fingers went. So again, another flat surface. And then you're gonna just take the pinky up, ring finger, middle finger, pointer finger, pointer finger, middle finger, ring, pinky, and again, this side is dysfunctional too. So again, flat, and I'm going to go pointer finger, right? Pointer finger, can I can just lift this. I mean, we probably use that pointer finger all the time. You can see I can just pop it up and down. Uh, middle finger, some of us use that more than others. <laughs> um, ring finger, and you can see I'm not really able to, to get that ring finger up. You see that? And then pinky. So the concentration should be being able to take that pinky up by itself, that ring finger up by itself, that middle finger up by itself, and then that pointer finger up by itself as well. So as you notice, as I'm doing this, that I do struggle with one side or the other, middle finger's getting there, and it takes really some concentration as well to do those exercises. So there you have it. Three different exercises that you can do at home, in your spare time, in your downtime, in your active time, that's going to assist you have an improved quality of life and help with the onset of arthritis, or if you already have arthritis, help you with that pain management and the discomfort of that arthritis. This was the stretcher. If you need to get that hydration, go ahead. Your perceived exertion should not be up, but I'm definitely taking a sip of this. Ooh, nothing like it. I need to drink more of it, that's for sure, because it definitely gonna help your blood, it helps your blood pressure, it helps your skin, and it helps you in the aging process. So we can go over that too with water, but this was all about the fingers, arthritis, and it was part one, stretcher, arthritis, peace my friends, go in peace, part two is coming your way real soon.